Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and we're back to, uh, to work on a reel in a bag or a box project. Now, initially when I got this in for a preview, I actually thought this was a Pissafon reel, but it's not. It's a Pissafon reel box, and inside that I have a Shimano Cardiff 400. And, uh, well, sometimes I think the viewers like to challenge me. Most times I think they just got sidetracked along the way. And while well, we wind up with a bag of parts and a request for help, and I'd like to always try and help those folks out, see if it isn't something that uh, I can help restore and get back to working again so that they uh, can get more fishing out of their reels. So how does this happen? Well, it usually happens because somebody starts a project leaves the project at midstream, comes back and can't uh, recall exactly how those pieces and parts went back together again. And uh, we'll probably find some examples in here. And we'll show you how to take this reel apart. Well, it's already apart, <laughs> but how to uh, service it. Hopefully we'll be able to restore it. And if we do restore it, hopefully we'll be able to uh, get this one fishing again. Well. Most of the time, fishing reel service involves cleaning, checking for parts, re-lubricating, putting it all back together. So I start by uh, lubricating the bearing on the back end, and while this frame is open, and before I forget, we're going to remove the pawl cap here. Now this pawl cap has um, a weakness to it. There are little the slots almost looks like the top of a castle on a hotel uh, and uh, you can see that this is kind of like teeth well they get chipped out if they get over tightened and here's an example of it right there one of those got chipped off so just be careful when you're tightening that uh, when you go to put it back please uh, just kind of hand tighten and then maybe a quarter of a twist or something well the pole is inside I just put some oil on that Again, I recommend that you hand tighten. And then turn that inner wheel to make sure that the pole is seated properly. We can see that it's moving through there. And then maybe just a quarter of a turn or something just to snug it up. Please do not over tighten it. Oh, and that's not seated yet. So the pole has two points on it. And uh, if those points are not aligned into the worm gear, the uh, mechanism won't work properly. A little bit of oil onto the worm shaft. We're going to set that whole thing aside. On your um, spool, we have another uh, bearing. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm trying to get the big parts out of the way so I don't have to worry about them too much so that I can focus on the pieces on the bridge. Take your spool, turn it, and make sure that your line guide is operating, which it is. So we're all good with that part now. All right, got our, our side plate here. That's the last thing on. There is a bearing on there. It's missing the bearing cover or cap at the time. I'll assume that's in the bag of tricks here. And let's, uh, let's see what we have here. Let's see what we have there. Let's see how we can put this back together and uh, where this takes us. Well, we got one spring here that I don't know what that belongs to. I didn't see this as a line counter reel. I'm going to have to go pull a schematic because it looks like this spring is somehow associated with this. I don't know. All right, so we have a bridge assembly here. And I will deal with what I can deal with first. And then if, I, uh, if something doesn't seem right, we'll, we'll kind of go from there. We have the star adjuster, we have the bridge assembly, and we have some things backwards on this. That's never much of a surprise there. So this is a, a finger dog that's going to control the anti-reverse. Unfortunately that one was mounted onto the access point for the screw cover, not where it belongs. I take this off, pull this piece out. Gotta be careful as these things start to rock and roll. I believe there's a bearing under here. 
I'm going to oil it from the outside rather than remove it. If you want to remove it, you can uh, remove the C-clip here. Looking on that side, it, it may or may not be a bearing. It may be a bushing. All right. This is your anti-reverse collar or click mechanism, and the finger-jointed anti-reverse dog is going to go over that. So when this is operating, the tooth on the gear is going to bump up against one of these and hold that fast. Well, there's a stud in the back of this down here. That's where the actual dog goes for the assembly. So slip that over and align it, push down on it, and that is your anti-reverse assembly there, not up top here. So turn it and you'll see, in, well, in this case we've got the trip mechanism is down, but you'll see it goes out as you turn and as you back pedal it pulls in. All right. Next up then we have the uh, yoke. The yoke is going to have two sides on it. It's going to have a ramp side. You'll see it here like that and a flat side. The ramp side goes to the back. I'm going to take the opportunity. This is all clean. We're just going to take an opportunity here to oil the slide bars so that they glide over the pieces. The groove on the pinion gear faces the spool. The sloped sides face the back or also face the spool so it lines up like this for installation. Before we install that, we're going to put some grease onto it just to make sure that it has a nice uh, quiet ride to it. And then we can put the assembly over the two flat pieces here. Sometimes easier said than done. Well, while we're doing this, if you have any questions on this video uh, or the reel, or how things happen. <laughs> uh, if you leave them with me, I will try to uh, answer those questions for you. And uh, the best way to do that is leave it in the comment section. And if you leave it in the comment section, I do try to answer those uh, the following day. All right, this appears to be the bottom washer. Though it's pretty wide. I guess that's the uh, the washer we get. All right, washer on. Main gear checked. Inspect the teeth. These are all clean. If there was any issues in the channel of these, you would pull a, uh, a hard bristle brush and pull down and clear it that way. As an alternate, you can use a pick to pull the pieces out. In this case, this is clean. Let's go ahead and grease that. A little curious about those two pieces in that, that I'm not familiar with, but I guess we will uh, see what we can see. We may have to go back and, and redo this video based on that. All right, then we're just going to merge the two there. We have a well, I think we got this appears to be a Carbon Tex upgrade, so we have three different metal washers. We have a round one with a rectangular center. We have one with a round center with ears on it. That's called an eared washer. We have a very thick one with that rectangular center, but also two poke outs. That's the top washer. So this is the bottom washer. This one goes in first. Then we're going to put the second of these. Now these are carbon tex washers. They do not need to be uh, greased. You could put a light coat of grease on there if you like. And if you do, uh, wipe it off before you continue. This is the eared washer. That's the middle washer that goes in the stack and in the two holes or slots in the side. And we have the smallest one of them that goes on to the top washer. And then somewhere in here, well there it is, we should have the collar for the anti-reverse that's also got the two slots or st studs on it 
that goes inside the main. That should be the bridge as built. The only thing missing on that, now I'm really getting confused because we have a fuse and that's not an electric wheel. There's two small springs that go here. Somehow I've got four. So always fun to try and figure this out. The two springs go on top of the posts there. Okay, let's get the cap back on here. Just so we don't lose that. Let's push that off to the side for a moment. This is the assembly for the instant anti-reverse. And as best as I can tell, it would go this way. And then it's always a matter of trying to figure out which screws are which. So I'm looking for two of the same screws. Those two are the same. Well, now I'm really confused because I got two of these. <laughs> All right. And for whatever reason, I'm missing a screw for the side plate as best I can tell. Just want to take a look for a moment, see what we have here. Okay, those are threaded. We're going to assume that these... Oh, there's... I assume that these belong here. So if you like kind of solving puzzles, uh, well, I do that too. And if you want to uh, subscribe to my channel, you'll see the Reels and the Bag projects as they come in. All right, we're just going to put these two in, assuming these are the two that belong here. And I don't, I'm not sure they are. All right, I'm going to say that that is not one of them. So I have a whole bunch of screws and pieces, but I'm missing a screw. I'm going to take it this smaller one. Let's try this one. That other one just didn't feel right going in. All right, well, we've got that piece on. We're missing a screw there. Try to come back to that one. All right, if I do this correctly now, this should be able to load this piece onto the reel. And you want to line this up so that you can bring it all down and that your side plate snaps on and that you have access to the two points here. These are the two that we saw that anti reverse on clearly do not belong there. Now there's two longer screws here. These two should be our post screws. So I'm going to have to search a parts bin somewhere, see if I can find them. Well, maybe not. I, mean, I think I just moved the piece and it might be there. I'm going to find out. All right. Or that may be the cap screw for the tie down. Always fun when somebody tells you all the parts are there. This is the first time I've had more parts rather than fewer parts. Let's go put this one back in. Well, I hope you're enjoying this. If you do, if you want to see more of these, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button. And uh, well, you'll see what I'm working on and you get to make a choice as to whether that's something you would like to see. Well, I got a whole host of uh, washers in here now, and I'm a little bit confused, concerned, or whatever. I think this is going to belong on the other one down here. And, uh, well, we're going to kind of play it by ear, see what we can do. I'm going to turn this right now, and hopefully, I got a turning wheel. I do. Look at that. And so far, we got a success. Now, these, I'm not sure if, if four are intended for this since I have a extra bridge assembly in here, but we're going to put them in anyway. These are not flat washers. These are concave washers. And I like to put them face to face so that there's a gap in the middle of these. And then put those down and we should be able to put the, this one may or may not go over the top here. And I think that belongs to the fuse, wherever that fuse belongs. Let's go ahead and put this down then. 
And again, I may have two more washers on there than I should. I'm going to guess that I do. So, Jim, if you uh, if you find that you need the two, or actually, I'm probably going to go back and look at the uh, the schematic on this. But for the purposes of this one, I'm going to say that only two belong in there. And why am I going to say that? I was looking at the, the gap here underneath here. This looks much more manageable than the other one. There is a tension washer that goes on after that. And the handle goes on. Then the handle cap goes on. And then I have a problem because I don't have, can't find, not seeing the tie down. So this is a 10 millimeter. I'm seeing the tie down, but I'm not seeing the screw that would hold that on. This is your tie down. And that'll go like that, but I don't have that screw right now. I'll probably search it. And uh, maybe we do get four on this. We're going to check. But this reel will operate for now to tell me whether we've got this thing back together again with two or four. All right, I'm going to take that off so I don't lose that. When you go to reset the side plate into the reel, this is your uh, free spool release. When it clicks down, it's setting that free spool. And then when you turn the handle, it brings it back up. When you go to set this on the side plate on the reel, push this down. Get it out of the way. This is your release button. When you go to set the spool or the side plate onto this carrier, bring this all the way up. This is the up position. That way you won't jam the device and it'll make it really easy just to put it on like that. And to tighten our three screws. We're going to go ahead and do this. And probably after the test, we'll end the video. I will go and get the schematic to see if all four of those tension washers belong on the post. If it is, I will simply redo that. We'll go and see if I can find that screw for the tie down uh, carrier. Not sure if I can do that. And uh, if it all goes according to plan, we will declare success. All right. First thing that should happen is that should pop up. It does. Let's turn that reel. Uh, we don't have the drag washers engaged. That would be helpful. Turn the reel. We have our adjuster going. We're probably a little tight. Oh, well, not tight at all on that. <coughs> Tighten that down the other way. Spin it. We have that. Free spool. We have our spool assembly is ro rotating as it should. You can see by the line guide moving. Click it. This one's ready to go fishing again. Well, that was an interesting example of a reel in a bag project. So how do you avoid that to begin with? Well, get that schematic. As you see, I'm in trouble right here. I don't know if there's an extra one of those um, um, star, uh, tension washers belong in there or not. So I'm going to have to go back to that. The schematic is a burst diagram. It will show you how these pieces and parts come together if you have any questions. The uh, second thing to do as you're disassembling the reel, take pictures. If you take pictures, you would have seen the locations. For example, there was a mistake here with that anti-reverse dog on the wrong post. If you had taken pictures along the way, you could have discovered that earlier, and that would have uh, helped you. And uh, then uh, just take your time, be patient, and generally speaking, you should be able to take the reel apart easily and put it back together easily. So I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, trip down puzzle uh, mania. Uh, I know Jim's going to enjoy it because he's got his reel back ready to go fishing again. And uh, we've all learned something in the process. So I appreciate all of you watching. I appreciate the work that our first responders and essential personnel are doing. Thank you for your services. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.